हे गाइस वेलकम टू द टेस्टिंग एकेडमी माय नेम इज प्रमोद एंड वेलकम टू द सीरीज ऑफ द लर्निंग प्लेराइट इन जावा एंड टू एंड वेब टेस्टिंग विद प्लेराइट राइट दिस इज द पार्ट थ्री वे इन द फर्स्ट एंड सेकंड पार्ट वी हैव बेसिकली डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द कोर कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्लेराइट एंड वी हैव रिटर्न ए वन प्रोग्राम विच इज विच इज मोस्टली ए हेलो राइट इन द पार्ट वन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वाई प्ले राइट इज ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू लर्न टू गेन एंड एनहेंस योर स्किल्स एज वेल एज हाउ प्ले राइट कैन बी हेल्पफुल Uh, if uh, there are certain scenarios like automating the modern web application right so in this series in this part we will learn about the selectors all right so let's get started awesome guys awesome let me let's do one thing so today's agenda is basically uh, learning about the selectors play right selectors are really really important and they are very much similar with the selenium if you have not and if you are someone who is basically uh the and no have no idea about the selectors uh, i'm going to give you the demo right how you can do that uh, what we will do is we will basically learn about how to click how to navigate and how to do many more things using selectors and we will try to automate one scenario a sign up scenario which will be your uh, a, it's a kind of a challenge for you guys and it this will be a task important task for you and i will be automating a login page of app.bw.com it's a freely public website live project that we will be automating in front of you okay let's jump into it awesome uh, before we before i start about the play play right selectors right i just wanted to tell you one important thing which is uh, the popularity of the javascript in javascript frameworks right if you see uh, selenium right especially the selenium right if you see selenium uh, depend uh, you can go through this chart where uh, i basically i have the, uh, got the start from the thoughtworks where they have basically uh, given you an end point where how selenium web driver io and different frameworks are basically uh, uh, compared right so you can go through them uh, let's go by one one by one right so let's jump to the selectors part right the first one the first one basically is a text selector okay so first of all i have told you in the previous video right that uh uh whenever so whenever you see uh whenever uh, you basically first of all you need to create a playwright object and that playwright object will give you a chrome instance that chrome instance will give you a browser instance and out of browser instance you will see a page now suppose you have loaded a particular page now you want to locate a, an element and click on it so you can use this uh, text selector which is called as page dot locator and in the double curly braces you can mention text is equal to login so whenever it sees a text is equal to login it will click on it right similarly we have css selector which are pretty much straightforward so if you know the css selector you can directly call the function page dot locator and the double in the double quotes you can enter any css locator that you have if you have no idea what is css selector that i'm talking about and a different css selector i would recommend recommend go to the uh, sd.live/ytp which is youtube of a testing academy and i have discussed about about the css selector and the xpath extensively how to basically uh, what are the selectors and what how to basically get any locator for an uh, a page okay and uh, playwright basically supports shadow dom and the example given below so it's a awesome uh, i would say a framework which basically provide you support of shadow dom also so right now modern web modern web application extensively use uh, shadow doms so you can basically do that so let enough of the uh, theoretical concepts right let's jump directly to the uh, demos okay so first of all let's do one thing uh, this is our website where we will be doing it so let's do one thing i'll open the login page first and you will be automating the sign up flow i am automating the login flow okay so this is a username and password okay and these are temporary username password that i have created and if i click on sign up if i enter the username and password here i will be uh, there will be a successful login you will see a trial is over that's fine because my 30 day trial is over but you will see a dashboard loaded okay now this i want to achieve using playwright how you can achieve let's jump into it first of all let me do one thing let's log out and let me make myself little smaller to basically interact with this page what we need is selectors right and the locator so this is the input box right and if you see uh, this is this is a input box uh, this is input box 
this is a button that I need to create. So loading this page, so our automation scripts looks like this, uh, loading this page, uh, clicking on this, entering the value, clicking on this, entering the value and the clicking on this button. Cool, make sense? Okay, let's uh, fire up our favorite tool, which is IntelliJ. Last time we have discussed about this example, right, where we have basically done the same thing. So now what I have done is I have created a day three, okay, and here I have added one function. And here you can import. So we have successfully added the test ng, right? So test ng uh, is already added. Cool. Now this is our basically uh, function which will run, uh, which will basically log in, right? So couple of things I will just uh, copy paste, uh, which is till the navigation, right? Uh, we will basically launch similar thing. We will launch the playwright. We'll create an option. Right. I have set the uh, headless to false as well as slow mode. Uh, let's make it hundred. Little slow it will load. Now I need to navigate. So page dot navigation is basically used for navigation. So I need to navigate to this UI. Right. And this code I have explained you earlier also, guys. So don't worry. In the previous part two, you will see that. So this will basically load that application. Okay. Now what I need is I need to locate the first element. Right. So this one. So if you right click on it, click on expect element and let's see what is the CSS selector. We can use a CSS selector for this, right? So there are a couple of CSS selector, for example, name as well as ID is there. So we can use ID. Okay. So page dot locator, right? And here it's basically telling you, you can mention, you can give text locators, you can give CSS selector, right? So we will give a CSS selector, which is this. And uh, if you want to give ID, you need to mention the hash if you are giving the class you need to mention the dot that's a important thing now i need to do basically fill so if you see there's a method called as fill what is the value you want to fill in this i want to fill this information so double quotes and that's it cool let me duplicate it with uh, with the control d it's a shortcut in eclipse okay now uh the next locator we need is so i'll just click on it, hover over it, and you will see we have a login password ID, right? And, label, uh, and we will change it. Cool. And uh, I need to see the value also. So what I will do is just uh, instead of password, let's say text and the pass, it's very simple. I think wingify 123 is a password. And what we will do is we will just replace this with the wingify 123. Now we have two elements. Now what we need is we need to click this button. Okay, so let's see what this button, what is the CSS selector for this, okay? And we have ID, so awesome. What we can do is we can directly page.locator and here, double quotes, uh, hash here. Now I need to click, right? Now, instead of locator, you can directly do is you can directly call click and here you can mention the method so in selenium what we used to have is we used to fetch the element first then click right here in the play right you can directly click by using the page object so that's the easiest way i think this is really easy and uh, what we need is after uh, this there is a uh, loading right so loading will be automatically handled with the play right because play right is a really awesome tool and it basically auto wait uh, till the dom load and dom load another function what we will do is we will do another check which is basically we will verify this uh, page title and that page title, this is our CSS selector, okay, which is data QA is equal to page subtitle and that, and that we want to verify this span if you say, right, uh, this one, if you see this is our CSS locator, which is data QA. So CSS selector here can be a key value, key is equal to value also. So key is data QA, which is explicitly added in this website. And the value is this one. It's a unique value and it's not a random value. First of all, you will see lots of random values in uh, sometimes random generated classes, but these are specially made for the QA people to automate this website. Okay, so this is actually, uh, that's why. So you can use this also. So what we need is, uh, I will add one assertion in this case. Okay, and I can add this. So what we need is, uh, let's do one thing let's uh i think the title we can assert first of all right so you can get the title by docu uh you can get the title by document dot get title so di title is dashboard okay 
So I'll just copy this. And if I, so assertion, page dot title should be basically dash board. Okay, cool. And we need to import, right? So we will see alt enter, right? And we need to get the assertion. So let's get the assertion from the, cool. And we have a script ready. So let's quickly run it. And let's see if we are able to run it or not. Run and verify. Right. So uh, what we are doing is we are basically filling up a form. Now we have, we are successfully launched, launching it and we are just filling up. Okay. So now I've in the next step, we will basically convert this into a setup teardown approach where we will launch the browser separately. We will close the browser separately and we'll do the logic separately. Okay. So we can, we can also do that. So I'll show you in this, uh, give me one second, uh, in this, so right now it has, it has started and let's see if we are able to see that or not. Uh, yeah. So we are able to launch it, the website and here we have our website ready. We are able to enter the value, right? And right now we are basically trying to click that button, sign in. Okay. Let's see if we are able to click it or not. Okay, so it's still waiting. I guess there is some issue and we will basically check it out also. Uh, we have, okay, I think we have missed the hash. So it will give us an error or not, let's see. So it's waiting, it's waiting for some time and it's uh, it's basically trying to find that element, but we have missed the hash. So it will give you an error after some time, right? right? And the error is basically says that the selector wait is basically exceeded the 30 second. So 30 second, it has waited for that element. So that's like a default timeout. That is, you know, now, right. And here, if you see, we can do that. We can do one more thing, which is, uh, I really like to do is taking screenshots. And this is the simple code, uh, which basically take the screenshot. And uh, what I do is generally, uh, what I will do is I'll just, uh, the name or uh, name will be the title dot to string okay so this will a title is already a string so yeah so i will take a screenshot also out, out of it so let's rerun again now we have fixed the error also right which is basically click method uh the selector was wrong because we have used id and we haven't added hash okay now uh, meanwhile it is running what we can uh, i was talking about we can use it something called as test ng's setup and tear down methods Okay, so we'll convert that into a right now. Okay, so let's quickly run this, which is basically, and we, we will also try to maximize it. And if you see, everything works well and uh, badge come out not found, what is it? Okay, so I, it's basically the assertion that we have added, right? Uh, it's uh, failing, why? Because uh, we are not waiting actually. After clicking, we are immediately, if you see the screenshot, right? Uh, okay. I think there is an error with the title. Let's do one thing. Let's give it a try again. Awesome. So what we have done is, uh, the click will basically auto wait for that element to run, right? But what will happen is, uh, whenever we click that submit button, now it will load the new page, which is basically a dashboard. Since it's a modern web application made in Angular, we need to wait for something called as network idle. So uh, this is really, really interesting concept where Selenium was quite struggling and we have to use our weights in a systematic manner, if you have no, right? But here in Playwright, we have an advantage where we can basically call, which is called as space dot wait for the load state. And the load state we, what we want is network idle. Until the dashboard page is fully loaded, we will wait and after it loads, we'll basically do our assertion. That's that's what I did. That's it, right? And uh, after that, we will take the screenshot also. So let's rerun again, and let's see uh, if we are getting the exact results or not, right? Okay. So it's we we are rerunning right now, and it will open the Chrome again. Same thing will happen here, but just one thing, which is uh, we will wait for the load state of network idle until the second page is loaded or not. 
okay so that's a really really an important and very interesting concept which is which basically differentiate the playwright from the traditional selenium and cybrus i think cybrus also do that but there's a the logics are little different in this case okay so let's see and it's running already uh, it has started yeah and, and it will put the username and password and click on the sign in and it will wait for the network idle till the dashboard is loaded right so after clicking this this is it's a web, modern web app and now it will load the full app right and now net network is idle it will stop the execution and our test case will pass okay so we have a test case pass and this is the screenshot that we have captured right awesome right now let's do quickly which is basically set up and uh, we will create two functions which is called as public public uh, void setup okay and here it will basically say that it's a setup method uh, it's a test again okay. it's a basically we will say it's a before test method right and i will I'll create a this these are test ng uh, test ng ones right these are just test ng is uh, setup test case and the closing of that right so we'll say tear down okay and we'll say it's a after uh, we'll, we'll use the annotation called on the after test okay so what we want to do so before that i will just say that okay uh, uh okay i have basically done i need to copy this to the day three uh, okay now we have the same functions available in the here what you can do is basically create this uh, all the data in the setups okay and here you just need to basically do little different uh, just make sure you are doing this yeah so basically i'm just putting them as a variable available everywhere okay so that they are available to every function so we need to initialize them here okay that's it cool and now we can call we can make this function here so this is a traditional test now okay uh, which is available uh, where we are running one test case this is a setup method which will so this is it's just a symbol it's the first first it will run then it will run this and after test it will basically close this so re let's rerun uh, this is kind of a traditional test case that and a proper formatted test case that i have made that's it there's nothing uh, fancy on this okay and you have seen all these in the test ng also so i've just uh, optim uh, just optimized my code so that uh, we have a proper bad so if you see here right the first setup will be run then your test case will be run so right now the test case is running and it will start putting the data similar similar thing nothing nothing is changing here right right now we we have a failure okay uh, probably some what is it problem okay it let's suppose it's uh, something some let, let let me see okay so we are checking it let's check okay we are back okay so we have optimized it and i have used one interesting feature which is called as wait for selector so what i am doing is i am basically waiting for this selector to load which is basically this class okay page heading page heading class until this is visible i'm i will wait for it and then assert it so that assertion will basically pass okay so now let's rerun and again you will see that test case will pass will pass and we will basically uh, checking when there is a load happening on the page okay and uh, oh light uh, so let's rerun and let's check it out okay and here we have username password we are right now entering uh, please enter username and password okay net is little slow that's fine and here we have dashboard loaded fine awesome cool so test case passed we have a uh, screenshot also uh, below part is not loaded we can check add a check also on that okay uh, thanks for watching till now i hope you have learned something new in this video and we will learn some more advanced uh, things in the uh, next video all right thanks a lot don't forget to like and subscribe i'll see you in the next video bye